YouTube, back again today with another tutorial. I got a lot of feedback on my Travis Scott High Reverse. Um, basically just changing out the swoosh, a color change on some of the panels, um, some red um, logoing, nothing crazy big, nothing crazy hard. Um, just something you need to be super careful with doing. But before we get into the tutorial, big shout out to Osmo, uh, for the package. Um, this is what I shoot my videos on now. I haven't always been shooting that. This is just a new product. It's our third, um, gimbal. It's pretty dope. I love using it. It's easy to use when I'm doing my video. So big thanks to them. Product is super dope. Um, another shout out to Angelus, direct.com for all the products. Um, everything I'm going to use in this video is Angelus Direct um, products. So first thing you're going to be needing is black. You can even use the flat black on this. I would suggest the flat black. Um, just saves you a little bit of time on the matting. Um, you're going to need some deglazer. We're going to be using some Too Soft and black on the tongue, just on the material color change. And then just some Q-tips and also these uh, pads. You know, this is, it makes it easy to wipe down, uh, get all the wax off the leather, uh, so it gets a good bond. So let's just bust into this video real quick, the Travis Scott High. And we're basically going to be making it look like the low. Now, this customer requested to not change the swoosh out, so we're going to be keeping the swoosh black. Um, on my the original pair that I did, I did end up changing to an ostrich leather, um, completely removing the swoosh and then um, stitching it back on. And then of course doing all the red highlights on the face and then on the Cactus Jack logo in the inner panel. Um, we are not gonna be doing that today. Today we're gonna be doing black panels with black logoing. Um, we're gonna be switching over the tongue to uh, black and that's where the Too Soft comes in. You're gonna have to mix one to one with your black paint, Angelus paint, um, with Too Soft. Uh, just so you don't get that really stiff feeling. This is gonna keep it soft. Um, nice and, and and flexible and you're not gonna have to worry about paint cracking or getting stiff i know a lot of people complain about that um so the first thing we're going to get into is first we're going to remove these these uh the lace pack and uh get that out of the way so the first thing i'm gonna start doing is i'm gonna take the q-tips and some of my deglazer and I'm gonna start getting inside here because I don't wanna get any of the deglazer on the um, suede part because I don't wanna risk that changing colors. I don't wanna have to go through and, and have to fix that. So I do use a Q-tip around the edges to make sure that I do get in really, really good. Um, get that wax off so that way it bonds. So when you're walking, you don't have any creasing um, of the paint or cracking of the paint. Um, and I also will be using a product that you can't get on AngelusDirect.com. I don't believe, I could be wrong, and I, I apologize, Angelus, if I am wrong, but I do use some adhesive promoter. I just use Bully Dog. I've been using this for quite a while now, and this basically just helps the bonding between the paint and the leather. I've noticed that it, it, it doesn't make the shoe stiff. It doesn't add any texture or anything like that. It just basically helps the paint adhere to the leather. To me, twice as strong. It's more durable. Um, and that way when you're customizing shoes too, and you're using decals, stencils, anything like that, you don't want that paint ripping off. And plus you just want a good ad ad adhesive um, bond to the paint and the leather. You don't want it chipping off or cracking, which if it does, that just means you didn't prep well enough. And it happens guys, it does. You're just gonna have to, to go through, if you, you rock your customs and it does crack, just go through and just really deglaze the spots that cracked around it and then just fade the paint back in and, and then re-finish uh, it with the matte finish or gloss finish, whatever you put on top of that. So, so yeah, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing is basically, let me go ahead and just turn this thing down and let's focus on the shoe here. And I'm gonna be taking the deglazer, which I have in this, and I'm just basically going to start really getting this wax off in here. 
this is one of the crease spots, so it really needs to be prepped really well in the toe box. I mean, prepping's key. So, and if you do get a little bit on the, the suede, it's not gonna cause any damage. I mean, you have to get a ton on there to, to cause any damage, but we just wanna leave as small as room for air as possible. So I'm just gonna grab these Q-tips and go along the edges around the, the front toe strap and just get really good and inside and make sure that I am removing that wax off of the leather so that paint can bond. And you can see it too on your Q-tip. It, it does turn a different color. So you know that you're removing something. You can feel it, you can see it. Um, it does make a pretty big difference um, removing that. Just make sure you get it good, guys, especially where the creasing is on the toe box. Just, and especially this leather. This leather is super soft, um, so it, it, it flexes quite a bit. So you really want to take the time prepping. That's key in this custom. I mean, any custom in general, but especially when you're painting toe boxes and stuff like that. And then I'll take one of my pads from Angelus. this toe box really, really, really well. Let's see if you can see that wax. I don't know if you can see the color because of the light, how bright it is, but hopefully you can see that. But you'll notice on your pad that you are getting that wax off. And it's a finish, a wax, whatever you want to call it. And you want to start getting to the paint because then you know that it is getting down to where you can make a good bond. And then we're gonna move to the other panels. Again, I am going to use a Q-tip on this swoosh right up on this lace strap, just because I do not wanna be rubbing that, uh, that uh, suede. And there's not much finish on this this swoosh. You get down to the paint really, really quick. So it's not. So you got kind of the basic idea. And I know anyone that's watching my videos kind of has an idea about the glazer and how to use it. But I just like to stress it that it is the number one key to customs. So... I am not going to sit here and make you watch me do all this. I'm just going to go ahead, finish prepping the shoes out, get them done, and I will be back for the next step. Okay, I am done prepping the leather. Basically went through and just really scrubbed um, all that wax off. I mean, I used about 25 Q-tips and about four or five different pads to get that wax off. Um, I do always recommend to let the deglazer dry and completely just be vaporized off the shoe. I know if you mix acetone with paint, it's basically going to just stop the bonding between it. It's going to ruin the paint um, and it's not going to uh, bond very well with the, with the leather. So while that is completely just drying, and I know to touch it dries, but it's kind of the same concept with paint, you know, just because it's you know, dry to touch doesn't mean it's completely cured yet. So what I'm gonna go ahead and start doing is getting the paint mixed with um, the Too Soft so I can start dyeing the tongues. And again, Too Soft, one to one ratio with the paint, uh, whatever color you're gonna use. Just be careful, if you add too much Too Soft, it's not gonna be vibrant. You're gonna have to add more layers and layers to get it as dark as you want and to me the more paint you add the stiffer it's going to be now i don't care what custom you're doing if you're adding paint to the fabric whether you're using too soft gac 900 it is going to change the texture of the material it never quite feels the same and and the closest you're going to get to a natural feel is by adding less paint so um just make sure it's one to one ratio if you got to put in your bottle um 
to to something that's you know translucent so you can kind of mark it and uh, make sure that it's even go ahead and do that so I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this one to one and I will be back uh, to show you how I do the, the tongues all right I got my Angelus black paint mix one to one with the two soft and I'm gonna be using Angelus number six brush today um, some things you do want to be weary of when you're dyeing this tongue is to watch out for the patch. Don't put so much on your brush when you're going over the stitching in here because it does bleed through and you want to do as less bleed as possible. I mean, if you can get none, that's pretty dang good. Um, but it does take some talent, some time, some patience to get it, you know, to that method. Just be careful on how much you have on your brush when you go to, to dye this right here. And then sometimes you can see all these fuzzies on tongues too. You can see it on all different types of materials. Um, I just kind of go through and just make sure all them small fibers um, are, are gone. You can use, uh, you know, you can cut them if they're really long. You can use a fuzz muncher. You can, I mean, there's different methods. This is just the fastest. Just be careful. Um, you don't want your shoe on fire. But that way you get a nice clean look. And... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start applying. I'll show you a little bit here, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's it's nothing too hard, too crazy. Just take your time, be patient. Um, and uh, yeah, just start somewhere and start working in a direction. I'm actually gonna start at the bottom. Uh, I'll start in the middle today. And you're just basically letting it soak in and working it into the fabric. And again, as little as possible. So make it uh, spread as far as you can. That way you keep that natural feel of this material. You're not trying to alter it too much, but like I said, adding paint, um, it's gonna change the, the feel of every material, but do your best to try to add as least as amount as possible. And of course, once this dries all by itself, just let it naturally dry. Then you're going to hit it with a heat gun um, to make it really soft. It activates that too soft and uh, it changes the feel quite a bit. So as you can see, it gets it nice and black. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and work the tongues and I'll be back to show you the results. All right, I got the tongues dyed and they have dried on their own and what I'm gonna do is hit them with a heat gun just to activate that too soft and it does change the texture it softens it up quite a bit I'm gonna turn my gun to about to about 300 degrees and it warms up and I'm just gonna slowly pass over them and heat them up for about two to three minutes just to make sure that that too soft um, it's activated and gives it that nice soft texture. And I did one, I was able to, to do one solid coat. Um, and again, you want to do as less paint as you can. That way you don't tamper with the feel of the material. As you know, you just don't want to mess it up. Keep it as soft as possible. And the tongue will actually come out pretty dang close. You really aren't going to be able to tell a texture on this material. You, know, you get into the easy boost and stuff like that, you got to apply kind of bit, well, a lot more paint than you would on these just because the fabrics are so thick to guide all the way through. You add quite a bit to get it as deep as you want. It's, it's not as easy to dye as these tongues are. So. I'm not trying to make, not melt anything or cook anything. Just, just warm it up and keep it at a certain temperature for a couple minutes. 
just to make sure that that cure is right and get that nice soft texture. And these do feel really great. Can't even tell the difference. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is applying a coat around the suede, just kind of outlining with black paint. Um, and I'll be using, let's see, probably another six. Um, and that brush is a little dingy. Maybe, I'll keep that one light. Maybe I'll just use the same brush. Um, and why I do that is because I don't want to depend on the tape job, just because I don't like to really press the tape on the suede too much. I do use a less aggressive tape on the suede, that way it doesn't pull up them fibers. Um, but I like to just outline the edges with a nice coat of black. That way I can just tape over it and it doesn't have to be exact. I don't have to push it down much just to get a nice even blend. Um, and the reason why I do like airbrushing over hand painting because it allows me to use less paint and get a nice flush finish, nice even finish um, with less paint. I mean, that is the goal. The, the less paint in a custom, the better whether you know it's choosing the right base shoe so you don't have to put paint all over it um, because after all the goal is to make this shoe wearable and make it last so i'm gonna go ahead and start outlining all the white with a nice thin coat of black and then i will be back to show you um, exactly why i do that just so you get more of an understanding one thing i did forget to show you guys is the adhesive promoter this is something i spray on before i paint after i have deglazed and I just mask off a little bit, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna lightly spray, just a nice thin coat. I don't wanna get it on the suede, but this is just to make that paint bond twice as good as it normally would if you were just using deglazer and uh, paint. Um, so now I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes and cure. And then I'll slowly, I did it to the toe box already. And like I said, I totally forgot to show you guys. But then I outlined the black and I'm gonna go through and just lightly tape around it and then hit it with an airbrush gun. That way it's nice and even. So again, adhesive promoter, light coats. You can add one or two coats. Um, I usually do two really light coats and then wait for it to completely dry before I even start to add the paint. So I apologize, I forgot to show you. So I'll be right back with some uh, results. All right, I am back. I am done with all the panels on the sides, the toe box. Um, they're real glossy right now because they have no finish on them. A lot of customizers, well, maybe I shouldn't say a lot. A lot of beginner customizers don't know how to use a finisher. And so they turn out this kind of glossy. Um, on this one too, as well, when you're, you're, make sure you're getting underneath the panels, lift up the layers, uh, the leather panels underneath, because when they wear these shoes, they're going to flex. They're, that, that leather is going to come out from underneath there. And if you didn't get up underneath there with a small, tiny brush, this is what I use to get up underneath there. And if you don't use um, a small brush, you'll get it all over the, the um, suede, but it's just a good idea to get underneath there. Get underneath the swooshes, um, underneath the panels, the edging, make sure your edging is on point. Um, you know, the, the tongue came out real nice. Factory feel, doesn't feel like anything's on there. Real nice. Um, but yeah, so far so good. You know, I've done this custom before, so I can't say, you know, I like how I'm turning it out, how it's turning out. I've done it, so it's not a surprise to me. But yeah, so I am gonna take a break and leave these to cure um, till tomorrow. And then what I'll be doing is taping off these swooshes and then just dyeing the swoosh or painting the swooshes white. And again, I'll be using the uh, Bully Dog Adhesive Promoter on the swooshes. Um, to make sure it sticks and bonds with the leather a lot better than it would without it. And then he wants the Cactus Jack logo in a gloss matte instead of a matte. So all this will be a matte finish or a half sheen finish so it'll look factory. And then the inside Cactus Jack logo is gonna look super glossy. So we will finish up that all tomorrow. So I'm gonna let these cure all night um, and I will be back tomorrow. All right, I am back this morning. I've had uh some time off last night uh me and the girl went to a concert um but 
these had time to, to dry and cure. Now I'll feel better about putting some tape over the spots that I, I painted. I just like to make sure it completely cures that way. I have no lifting or, or uh, any damage to the paint just because I haven't waited for it to cure properly. So the next step, now that I have all of these done and they came out great. And uh, one thing that I do wanna give as a tip, when you're doing it, make sure you're lifting these panels up a little bit and then hitting them with paint um, and then blow drying it as you're hitting. It's kind of a longer process. Um, but what happens when you go to wear these sneakers and uh, they start to, to move around and twist, all them lines that aren't painted are gonna get exposed um, and it's not a good look. So try your best to get up underneath them, uh, suede panels and in between the cracks, underneath the swooshes. You can lift these swooshes up a little bit and just, you know, just get a tiny brush I use just a little brush like that, just these little throwaway brushes get underneath there and uh, I blow dry them as I, I'm, I'm, you know, jamming it up in between there. Just so when he goes to wear these, you know, there's not that exposure of white leather. Uh, the next step on these is I'm gonna go ahead and mask these off. And again, you know, I use two different types of tape. I use real sticky tape and then I just use some 3M that's not too sticky on the suede. Because the last thing I want to do is leave glue from the tape on here. Because sometimes when you use a heat gun, you will leave glue residue. Um, one thing you can do is just grab another piece of tape and just, you know, almost like you're delinting it with tape. Um, but just a pain in the butt altogether. So I use one that's not going to damage the suede and leave any glue behind. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, on this step, I'm going to use uh, Andres' white paint. Um, I do mix it with a little bit of alcohol. Um, to thin it out. You can use Angelus's Too Thin or just regular rubbing alcohol. And I do maybe 0.5 to one ratio. So half of alcohol with one full, you know, so if you're using, let's do it in milliliter just so you can understand it. So one milliliter of paint and then half a milliliter of alcohol um, just to thin it out, depending on what type your gun is. You might not need that much alcohol. You might need a little more, but that will help your gun from getting clogged up and, you know, splattering everywhere. Um, turn your air up so you're not blowing out a bunch of paint because I do like to lightly coat it and then dry it as it uh, as I spray it on and then do multiple coats that way. Just thin, nice coats um, just so it's more durable. And again, I've already used the adhesive promoter, the Bully Dog adhesive promoter. You can get that at any automotive paint store. Um, it's like 18 bucks a can. It'll last you quite a long time. Um, but again, mine already has it on here from yesterday and mine is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is tape these up and then, um, get them sprayed. So I'll be back. All right. Just wanted to come and show you the progress of the swooshes. So after spraying them, you know, it's probably hard to tell in this video, but you see them edges, you know, they're not completely white. And I like to get my shoes to look as factory as possible. So how I do that with swooshes, because this leather's already one color before they even apply it to, to the, the shoe. So it's cut from a, pat, a, a big roll of white. So the edges need to be white all the way around the leather. And the top of this, top of this Nike on this custom, it folds down, like it lifts off. So you need to get the back side of that guy. You know, you don't want it to be black on that backside. You want it to look as factory as possible. So make sure you get in all the stitching. You know, you get it all the edges around and just make sure you get that clean look because I promise you at the end of the day, it's gonna look 10 times better. So on this one is already done. I went through and touched up the edging on it and I just use a, basically a small brush and I use just white paint. I don't add any alcohol to it. I don't want to thin it down. I want to leave it as thick as possible. So that way when I coat it, I don't have to put a million coats. Just make sure you get it down in them leather grooves because it is a rough, it's a raw cut. So it is, it does, it does got a lot of texture to it. So just make sure you almost like you're tattooing it in there. Um, just be super, super clean about it. Take your time. Don't rush. And I promise you it'll come out perfect. So it's looking more factory and factory. It's looking good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy how these are turning out. Um, the customer's super happy. I get on my Instagram live every now and then in between shooting with YouTube. And uh, so, yeah, if you haven't checked out my IG page, it's JSM underscore 801 underscore customs. And I do a lot of live feed on there, getting more and more. But I'm going to go ahead and just start edging this out. And like I said, I'm just taking a small brush, 
and I'm just going along the edges just like that with that paint just to give it that factory look so i'll get all that done and then we will move to the inner swooshes and i will be back all right i am back um as you've seen before i did this side did the uh edges of the swoosh and the back side of the swoosh, swoosh wherever it flaps up sorry i just had some lunch um now i'm switching over to do the inside swoosh um and again same concept light decent sprays you know what i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my uh my air compressor so I can show you guys um, what I mean by light I mean it's self, pretty self-explanatory but I'll go through and just show you it's a little bit easier when it's visual um, make sure I've got some white paint ready to go and again I mix my white paint with alcohol just to thin it out it does make them uh, um, coats a lot easier sorry I'm all congested I'm allergic to caffeine so when I drink Red Bulls or anything with caffeine in it, it totally just clogs my arteries but it's better than being tired so I always see me doing this or whatever it's because I drink Red Bulls and I probably shouldn't but yeah so right now I'll just show you um, some light coats let me go ahead and just turn this around or angle this so we can uh, show you the light coats Get this. I'm sitting for a minute and just clear it out real quick Let me put some more alcohol in this. I don't have enough air pressure built up yet. It's getting there. Again, three, four different light coats. Um, there we go. Okay, and what I mean by light coats is just gonna be and then I'm gonna completely let that dry. And that is what I mean by a light coat. Just barely any on there. This is gonna add uh, more flexibility to the paint. Um, if you just gum it all up on there, um, it's not gonna be really flexible. It's not even gonna look really natural either. Um, I know adding paint to leather, you're gonna hide the definition of the tumbled leather. Cleaning it off, prepping it and stuff will do that as well. So it does compromise a little bit of integrity to the leather um, as far as the texture goes but it's still going to turn out really really nice and just nice even coats and like I said I did mix this with alcohol so that does help with the drying process and in between sprays I always clear my gun because sometimes it'll splat um, due to leftover paint on the brim um, and it will cause some really white really bright white spotting and you, you want to not do that try to make it as even as possible spray a second one on this one before I pull out the heat gun This is spraying really, really, really light. This is not putting on a lot of paint. Just make sure you're getting it nice and even. And then hitting it with. I'm gonna do this about three or four times and I will be back to show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, I'm back, I got the swooshes done. About four light coats is enough to cover it. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start removing this tape. And this is a 3M tape. Um, 
the uh, half inch tape. It's not very sticky, which is amazing for suede because the last thing you want this doing is just tearing up the suede. If you use something that's more aggressive, you're gonna be ripping up that, that suede and uh, damaging it, causing some light spots and just, just not good for the suede. So just use a very mild tape for this job. Um, the tape job does not have to be perfect because you can go through and just kind of touch it up. A lot of the stuff you're gonna be cleaning up with a, uh, a thin paintbrush anyway. Um, so on this one, you know, as long as you're, you're covering the suede, suede really well with tape, um, you'll be able to go back and fix small, minor errors. Um, and that's exactly what this custom really consists of. So no big worry there, but this tape is just not very sticky. It's just a 3M painting tape, um, half inch. I found it really well for suede. And then the next step after this, of course, is taking a very small paintbrush and we're gonna start applying white paint around the edges of the inner swoosh. Already did the outside layer. Um, this is very crucial for this custom. I mean, if you want this to look factory like it came this way, um, I remember I wore my pair to the Nike lab in Chicago and people thought it was a friends and family. Like some of the workers thought it was a friends and family um, just because of how clean the edges were. They were really happy with um, my work, which was awesome to hear from them guys over there at the Creative Lab. Um, so the next step is going to be basically just taking my small brush with white paint, white Angelus. I don't, I don't uh, thin it down and just add a little bit on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go over the edges. And on this custom, the back of the, the tip of the swoosh um, does come off the shoe. It's not fully sewn into the shoe. So you need to make sure that you get the back. And what I mean is see how that lifts off a little bit? You need to get the back of the, that as, as far as you can. Um, and then hit it with a blow dryer before you release it to lay back down because you don't want that white paint getting um, on the black panel because then uh, you're just back to square one not a really clean custom so just take your time on this part because like I said it helps out a lot in this custom so I'm gonna go ahead and do that go through both swooshes um, touch up any black if I got any overspray anywhere which you know I might have a little piece that I didn't tape really well but I can just hit it with a small brush and some black hit it with the heat gun it'll be perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back okay now I have all the white panel done it is complete with the edging done and it just makes it look so much more factory if you get around that edges like I said lift that Nike tip of that Nike swoosh down get the inside of that um, but you got to blow dry before you let it you know uh, go back into place just because if you don't it's just gonna transfer the white paint back on back onto the black panel and it's not gonna it's not gonna look good I mean probably won't notice it when you're wearing it or even when you're looking at it to the naked eye uh, most people just don't have a trained eye for that what I mean is that's just something I do every day so I notice the small things like that um, but now the next thing the customer has requested is that we want to leave the cactus jack logo on the inside gloss black so how I'm gonna make that work is I'm gonna go ahead and matte it out completely matte out the black and it's not gonna be like a, a really really super matte finish just enough to make it look like a factory black um, so it's almost a semi sheen and then I will go and hand paint a high gloss over that cactus jack logo 
um, and I'll come back and do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. Um, again, I'm gonna use my Angelus mat. Shake it up, because that mat does build up in the bottom. Almost looks like a bar of soap in the bottom of the bottle. So you gotta make sure you shake that up. I use mine almost every day so it doesn't get too bad. Um, and the technique with this one is going to be a little bit different than the shattered backboard. Um, a shattered backboard just because I don't want to get it super matte. So instead of hitting it right away with the matte finish and then instantly with the heat gun, I'm going to let it set for mm, probably 30 seconds longer and slowly at a lower temperature. Um, on the shattered backboards, I did a higher temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this and I'm going to turn it down about halfway. That way it's not as hot, it doesn't dry it as quick, because the faster it dries, the matter it's gonna be. Um, so, I'm just gonna get a little stream going, nothing too crazy. I don't wanna get it all over the shoe. Wait for that pressure to build up, it's already there, but wait till I get a full 60 PSIs. Um, and then yes, I will slowly start matting it um, to get rid of that sheen. Um, this high gloss and give it that factory sheen and then I will hand paint the uh, the cactus joke jet cactus jack logo with a high gloss and then just let it dry naturally I won't even use a heat gun and that way it stays nice and glossy so when you it'll have that uh, reflected image and I'll show that when I'm done so with this one I'll go ahead and show you guys a little bit of how I'm gonna do this sheen and again I got a small stream nothing crazy I'm just gonna slowly apply it make sure I'm getting just the black and the white See, I'm not even hitting it with the heat gun yet. And I'll show you the difference um, compared to the other shoe once this is done. Again, this isn't just a, for a look. This, this this has a function as well. You want to be able to wash your shoes. You you have to you have to uh, put a finisher on it because if not, it's not going to be washable. This is going to protect the paint. So now what I'll do is slowly start applying some heat. To this just to get rid of some of that gloss but not too much I don't want to get rid of it too much it's gotta have some shine to it okay, let's see if you can see the difference on camera so this one has a little bit of the, the matte finish on it. See how it just looks more factory? This is just the paint, no finisher. This is matte finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that on the rest of the shoe, just how I did, you, you watched it. I'm just gonna do the same method all over the entire shoe, uh, toe box, inner panel, and then uh, inner swoosh, and then just, finish from there so I'll be right back to show you how I'm gonna get that two-toned matte and gloss logo so see right now I got the matte finish on there just brushing these out getting ready to be finished see how it's got a semi gloss to it uh, it's more of a factory gloss uh, not too glossy not too matte um, but man this turned out beautiful so, 
Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna clean my brush and put it back. I always clean my brushes with alcohol and just put it down on a rag, wipe the brush just until it's nice and clean, and then put it back. So my next step is I'm gonna grab a little bit thicker brush, Angelus number two. Clean it off, make sure there's nothing on there. And I'm gonna grab my Angelus high gloss. I haven't used this in a really long time. And I'm basically gonna take this, dab my brush in it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just trace the logo that's already there. this is going to do is make this logo stand out at a at an angle like so I don't know if you can see it it does add a little bit of gloss to it and uh, makes it stand out a little bit and that's all he wanted to do. So I'm gonna add a few more coats just to make sure it's <clears throat> super glossy. And you shouldn't have too hard of a time seeing it um, because like I said, we did so many light coats. I'm just going to hit it right here. I put an extra, quite a bit on that last coat just to make it super glossy. And hitting with a blow dryer is not going to make it, I mean, dry dull. It's not going to be matte. I'm just helping it dry. See? See it? And that's all he requested. So... Now I'm just gonna do it to the other side real quick. <clears throat> like I said, I'm just dabbing it in the lid. So whatever's in the top of the lid, and I'm gonna take this and I'm just tracing the factory lettering. It's still pretty easy to see just because we did light coats. We didn't completely hide this lettering. With paint. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this custom. Hopefully you watch this whole video before you uh, decide to do this custom on your own. But... Probably hard to see in this crazy light, but it does stand out a lot um, from that mat. So again, clean my brush. Always clean your brushes. Keep your brushes clean. Um, I just use rubbing alcohol. Super easy. But this custom is done. I'm gonna throw some laces in it. I think I'm gonna throw the black laces in this custom. Um, take some photos, finish out this video and call it good and then get on to the next one i got some shattered backboards that need to be matted that came in today i think i got four pairs in total today 
So if you're getting them in soon, hit me up, DM me on my Instagram page, JSM underscore 801 underscore customs. If you want to send them to me, I am currently charging 25 bucks to mat them out, $8 return shipping. Processing is about two to three business days. Um, depending on when you, I receive them, it might be two to five business days. Um, but as of now, the ones I'm getting in are getting in the same day and going out the next. So they're about a one day, um, sorry, about a one day processing period on them. But uh, 25 bucks, eight bucks shipping, you can't beat that. And that is it for the Travis Scott Reverse High Custom. On my personal pair, I did the red logoing. You can check it out on my Instagram page. I've posted up pictures. I also changed out the swoosh to an ostrich leather. Um, completely ripped it off, re-sewed it on. Um, this one was a little bit different, but customer's request. But this is basically your tutorial on the Travis Scott Reverse High I appreciate you guys for hitting in. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, tag it, share it. I appreciate it. Go follow me on Instagram. Again, it's JSM underscore 801 underscore customs. I appreciate you guys more than you will ever know, and I will be back soon.